Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us. I am Donna Lynn Hilton, producer for Good Speed Musicals. Welcome to my home office. This is not the way that we intended to entertain you during 2020, but here we are, and we are deeply grateful that you've joined us. Hi, Michael. Hi, Donna Lynn. Um, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Michael Fling. I'm Donna Lynn's associate at Good Speed, um, and we're so happy that you're joining us today. Um, we're doing this episode as a pre-record, uh, so we can't take any questions like we would normally tonight, um, but we're pre-recording for a very exciting reason because we have some international amazing guests today that we're so excited to introduce you to. Yes, thank you, Michael. So our guests tonight, Toby Mar Moss and Lucy Marlowe, are the writers of the truly international phenomenon, Six the Musical. In addition, Toby and Lucy created directed and Toby appeared in the award-winning Hot Gay Time Machine, which was, at the time of COVID, a resident act at the Other Palace following performances in London's West End and at both the Edinburgh and Brighton Fringe Festivals. And Lucy is also a co-director of Six. Please welcome Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss. Hi. Uh, hi. hi, guys. <laughs> How are you? Oh, oh we're all right. <laughs> get him through. It's good, get him through. It's good to see your faces. Good to see you smiling. <laughs> you as well. You as well. Um, where are you? We, I like to start with the basics. Lucy, where are you? How have you been riding out the pandemic? I am in. Uh, ooh, I'm big. Um, I am in uh, North London in Tottenham. Um, in my house, I share a house with like ten other people. So that's where I am right now. Excellent. And Toby, where are you? Um, well, hi. Um, I am in Covent Garden in central London um, in my flat with um, my flatmates, um, one of oh. whom is here, one of whom is, is out. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I've been. <laughs> you told them to behave themselves while you were lying. I was like, you stay in your rooms and don't you get to run. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to be waiting and you've been well, you've both been well and managing. Yeah, okay. haven't had COVID, so. <laughs> haven't had COVID, no. knock wood, yeah. knock wood. No. All right. Well, knowingly. Um, so we. Oh, Donna Lynn, I can't hear you. Neither can I. Oh, yeah. Donna Lynn, did, did you accidentally mute yourself? This has never happened. Wow, first for everything. So. Mm -hmm. Good, we, we met you all, Goodspeed met you all when you joined the uh, Johnny Mercer Writers Colony um, in 2018. Am I right on that date? Yeah. 2018. 19. I think looking at my phone, it was like very early 2019. It was like January 2019. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and at that point, <laughs> you know, at that point, six was not quite the phenomenon that it is now right so you know when you were about to go in chicago for auditions and production like what was that timeline does that time yeah happen? we were we were auditioning people whilst we were over in the states for good speed for the chicago production but we just opened the open-ended west end run oh. in in january Mm. So we like opened that and then hopped over to Goodspeed. So it was running in London, but we just had one cast back then. <laughs> yeah. Did you realize? The one. Did you realize then what you had? Can I don't. I don't. I don't really know if to I, if I realize now what we have or whether I've realized too much. I don't really know. I I have no perspective on anything. So I yeah. I feel like it was as exciting when we got told that like a London theatre might want to take our Edinburgh Fringe student show for like a week as it was when we like found out about Broadway because it's just really hard to, you know, exciting yeah. news is exciting news and particularly when yeah. the kind of jump keeps getting right. bigger as well. Right. right, I guess I guess the thing of like just for good speed at like opening in London was like, oh wow, it's like, this is the first time it's like sat down somewhere for like a chunk of time because we do we done like a, a fringe run, like. In Edinburgh run, there's like mini tour and like a limited time in London. But but then when it was like in the West End in that theatre, just where we went to Good Speed, we were like, wow, it's like sitting down somewhere, and they're gonna like, but they're selling tickets for like six yeah. months. You know that that's like 
that's that's cool that's like that's like a that's like a show on in london you know yeah. um, <laughs> little did we know little did you know <laughs> that it would so, close down a year later <laughs> i can't believe that any of our audience doesn't know about six but in case they don't we should give them an introduction to the show you brought along some b-roll uh a promo piece so michael why don't we share that first and then we'll say a little bit more about what the show's about Ooh. yeah yay a story, a story that you think you've heard before. We know you know our names and our fame and our faces. You know what about the glories and the disgraces? Welcome to the show, to the history mix. Switching up the flow as we add the briefings. Everybody knows that we used to be six. Every time I listen to Sick, I'm like fully goof, fully gas. It's so great. Let's watch it's it so, again. <laughs> it feels yeah, so great. strange watching that. Yeah, it's, that's like it's been such a long time since I've seen Sick. That was like I think we filmed that maybe like the a few weeks after we'd started the first ever like tour so it's like all the like kind of like tester costumes that end up getting like developed and like so so much of the stuff i don't know yeah. it's just like quite funny being like oh like none of that looks the same anymore <laughs> is that the really west end like, company or is that is that the west end company or is that the okay. original west end mm. company yeah excellent yeah. excellent well i still have not seen the show so oh, this virus yeah. needs to get out of the way because oh, i want to see yeah. the show <laughs> Yeah. At this point, and at this point, like I, when I do eventually see it, like I'm gonna be singing along because I know all the words, and it's so it's such a, an incredibly fun score that it like it, it it's just it. I, I remember the first time I listened to it, I was like working with like college students, and I was like, this is the most amazing like musical theater can encompass so much. Like how. <laughs> Clearly it's about the six wives of Henry VIII, but like what, how did you take that idea and that story and put it into now? If that makes sense, if that question makes sense. Like how, yeah. you know, a very good question maybe, but. Um, I get you. I think how did things intersect to create six. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, well, so, so originally like the idea of them as a pop concert, um, Toby actually came up with um, because there was sort of various like criteria that we wanted to kind of tick off in terms of like, oh, we're taking to the Edinburgh Fringe, so it had to be famous subject matter, six wise, but we also like love pop music and wanted to like write pop songs as like musical theater kind of numbers. We wanted musical theater that sounded like the kind of stuff we like to listen to. And so um, we also wanted like a fun like conceit that like, that like made the that wasn't didn't mean that it was like a traditional book musical but also because we had to keep it an hour for the Edinburgh Fringe and so then Toby was like wait what if it's like the Six Wives as a pop concert and then once we had that kind of idea from there we kind of um so, so that, like, that we always knew the music was going to be kind of modern um from the start but then in order to kind of make we really thought about what we wanted to do with kind of like the reason we wanted to do like a famous group of women was because we wanted it to be about like women like taking up space and like reclaiming their voice in like the musical theater space, but also like historically. And so, kind of the idea of of of, of you know setting it in the modern day. it was not really set in the modern day. It's all sort of set in no time, but um, of like doing the pop song thing was to to kind of like make a statement about like women and non-binary people today like, like claiming their identities and like speaking out and so the way that we kind of made it like relatable in terms of the content is we we, we like read uh, read about the six wives and then kind of like chose moments in their lives or like themes in their lives that chimed with today and you know a lot of the time I just like mine my own tragic experience <laughs> <laughs> easy for most women to do easy yeah. for most women. Um, so, but, uh, yeah. um, at the time <laughs> at the time that COVID shut the world down um there were productions in the west end in australia there was a uk tour the show was about to be remounted in chicago 
where it had been produced by Chicago Shakespeare Theater, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. It has been on cruise ships, right? Yep. And you mm -hmm. were in previews on Broadway. Yeah, it was our, yeah. It was our opening night, the day that was that Broadway closed down. So yeah. we'd done, we just yeah. finished a month of previews. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. But are you, what is your reaction to how the world has embraced the show? Um, it's just very like overwhelming and really cool because I, I you know, like we never for a million years thought that anyone beyond like a couple of people at the Edinburgh Fringe would ever like embrace the show. Um, and so like the fact that you know we were have we were so lucky to be able to like have it in so many different places and have so many people come to see it and like to see our work and to like see um like you know including the band 10 women and non-binary people on stage being really talented and amazing and like hilarious and charismatic and um for 75 minutes is like it's really cool that like we're able to like do that in lots of places and that it has been embraced by like lots of people of you know like different ages and um you know it's it's yeah it's i mean like it's so cool. I mean, it's it's cool when like any it's it's cool when like anyone like yeah. see sees or listens to something that you've written in any context and like and like embraces it. It's like a very like I mean like like a good speed when we did the salons and we like would like play a song we've like just written like scribbling the final lyrics on the way over to like and we play it to people and then when people in the room are like respond to it and like they're like oh yeah we like this we like it for these reasons. It's like a really amazing feeling on any scale and so like to have it you know with six in such a in, in such a large yeah. scale but yeah it's just like overwhelmingly cool yeah it's wonderful yeah. so you were with us in the winter of 2018 as we said um just as mm -hmm. six was taking off um you arrived at the writer's colony to work on a new idea um and mm -hmm. about 24 hours into your residency you came back and said we don't want to work on that idea anymore we have another idea so <laughs> so tell us about that experience <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh dear. Um, I don't know. What happened? <laughs> well, we kind of turned up with this like idea uh, that like we'd kind of had for a while coming from this like concert that this like it was it was basically like an idea of this like old Hollywood it's a, a, a like diva worship was like the concept. So like why so many like queer men are obsessed with like female diva figures and like have been throughout the centuries, you know, with like Judy Garland and like Sharon Madonna and now like Lady Gaga and Beyonce and stuff. And what is it about that like relationship? I ask myself daily. I ask myself <laughs> daily. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But like, but it's interesting. And I remember like, I actually did like an essay on it when I was at uni. <laughs> and like, I kind of like looking into like, like the queerness there because it's often like, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's queer men and often these like straight women and like what, like, what what are the interactions between like like you know gender and sexuality that like that causes this phenomenon that's so like persistent and isn't really like reflected in terms of like like you know queer women like like worshiping like you know Tom Cruise in the same way it's like not <laughs> quite the same uh, like so where's that coming from and which is an interesting thing and it's an interesting idea that we're still like you know interested by and want to explore in a different way we turned up being like that this is going to be our like big musical and then we just like we spent days like sitting there being like 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 how does this work as a story like how does this work as a show like why do we like because we thought it was interesting like why do we want to tell like this as a story um and and then, it, and then, we, and then we basically like what? What are you gonna say, Lucy? Well, I was gonna say because I think actually it was like it started off with this thing where it was like, why a gay? It was like why are gay men obsessed with female diva figures? And then that was the mm. kind of question. And then we kind of opened it up, being like, well, do we really just want to like talk about like the way that men? Another another different way that men arguably like objectify women, and maybe we should kind of like mm. think about it as more symbiotic. And then we were kind of like mm. thinking about like loads and loads and loads of the most important relationships in our life are between kind of like queer men and mm. like women whether they're straight or queer or whatever and like and then we were kind of thinking about how that like is a relationship that doesn't really get presented that much and and that mm. we really like, care about and think is like important and then we kind of and then it sort of ended up we had this like and then we ended up accidentally having this big like dmc about something else entirely 
like about mm-hmm. like our like our bringings. And then we were like, wait, I think this conversation should be the musical rather than like the actual like because we've been like, what is it about like men like queer men and women that like that that means that we're like friends often or like means that there are like similarities but also like differences and like you know where does that come from? It was kind of the conversation that we were having. And then we like kind of came in and we were like, so we're gonna make that into a musical now. So it's like kind of like it was born out of the themes. But um, we then just like mm. decided to shine the light on ourselves because we're very self-centered. Mm. So. Well, I, I think it's more important than than that than you you're selling yourself mm-hmm. short. But you came in with a couple of songs that just really blew me away. Um, that you had shifted mm-hmm. direction so quickly. You came in with songs that I think um, delivered the truth of that story so powerfully. And you had mm-hmm. one song um, that. I think it, at the time you had written it as kind of the finale of the piece, I think. And it was essentially just yeah. this beautiful love story between these friends. It was one of the most beautiful love songs I had ever heard um, between oh, this so nice. a gay, it was between a gay man and a straight female who, 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 whose friendship was so strong and powerful and meaningful to both of them. It was a beautiful song. Um, which really sold me on the whole idea of this piece. And and I will say to our audience, I've been hounding them for two years. Um, have you finished writing it? Have you finished writing it? Have you finished writing it? So we can do something with it. So finish writing it so we can do well, something with it. We actually need we, to. We, we, you know we want we, to. Yeah. 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 We basically, we have been like writing We've written like more things. When mm-hmm. I think Toby's going to play a little something for one of the new things later. But, um, but like we that we got obviously six took over a lot of time and then and then the kind of pandemic kind of made us be like well like how can we write about something that's like set today when we like have when like today is like falling apart but now i think we're coming back to a time where like you know what like like dating does exist again you know which is like, more like the setup of like the the trip you know yeah. I mean? yeah. it's like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know it's 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 a slightly tricky when like at the moment like the world was like kind of like stagnant a little bit like before lockdown or, or just like mm-hmm. at, at the moment because the world just feels like it's changing so quickly constantly and we're having so many like large scale cultural conversations because like everyone's at home on their laptops and phones communicating about things that are going on and like it, it and um and and because there's like so much uncertainty as well about like what the world's gonna look like in a month's time compared to now compared to what it looked like a month ago it's like a little as you said it's a little hard to be like let's like write this thing which like in a year's time or in like a month's time could be like yeah. really like outdated in what it's saying or just like suddenly feel like 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 wrong in some ways and so i think yeah. like but 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 now like the world is slightly you know feels like a little bit more like it's coming back to like something we recognize as opposed to a few months ago yeah it's um yeah, yeah. I I see, so. but, yeah, but so we have you brought along a song. And... You brought along a song to share with us, right? Yeah. Tell yeah. us about it. Set it up for us, please. Oh my gosh! Wait, I haven't done this. Long. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> what is it? <clears throat> oh yes. Okay. So, um, the start of the show, uh, there's like a kind of like the the premise of it is these two musical theatre writers who are like tragic and alone and constantly single, and um, they kind of like are trying to like bargain with the audience to like understand why they're single so like we'll we'll tell you about our boring lives but like through songs so that you're entertained and then you can like explain to us why we're single or help us figure out why we're single um so the kind of beginning ones are kind of like comedy ones like sort of the like anecdotes about you know the, uh the time that um uh, one of the characters had eight dates that got cancelled in a row and then like you know the, the time that they like you know, we're on Tinder and it was very trying and stuff like that. Um, and then this kind of is like a sort of, this song is probably the first like shift into something a little bit more serious where um, the kind of female character, who I think we're calling Nancy at the moment. I think they're called Nancy and Oliver, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're gonna call I'm obsessed. Them. I love We're that. <laughs> all of the that our middle names. Yeah, they are. <laughs> So I think we might call like all of the characters like things from Oliver, and it's basically about um, Nancy uh, trying to kind of explain why, uh, uh, explain how she feels about this like person that's like in her past, like her ex, who she feels like it's like ridiculous that she isn't over, and yet somehow can't go over. And it's sort of like this sort of first step into like actually like trying to unpick what is going 
on with her and why she feels so tragic and alone, basically. Okay. Um, yeah, right. is, that, is that anything? Oh, and it's like a, it's like we imagine it as this big kind of like waltz number. So I think oh. she would be like singing, but there'd be like ensemble, like d like doing big, like kind of like Fred Astaire kind of like waltzy stuff. And then they'd have like phones as like, um, as like with the like phone torches as like kind of like firefly things. It's like kind of how we envisage mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, but it's like the like the big ballad moment. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll we'll put that in here. Um. Okay. So this is just in case. I know it sounds insane. I know when I add it all up, can't begin to explain. I know it doesn't make sense Trust me, I know that on paper it's all in my head Yeah, I make no pretense and Then I think about you Just you and there's nothing I can do, wish it wasn't true, all I see is you And no matter what I tell myself, lies I try to sell myself I'm aware that like middle of the night, if you said alright, pack your bags and run away with me What I wish that i just say no I would abandon it all, drop everything at your call Everything, everyone for that scene I wanted all along When we walk off into the sunset Watching the end credits run Let everything, everyone fade away Like every final song I would abandon it all myself for this song I literally find don't know why I've missed you for so long I force myself to forget replace your full name with an X so it's always crossed out every time that it's said I think about you and just you and how in a year or two I might start anew with somebody who should be perfectly enough for me I could be his love story but if you arrive middle of the night and you said alright pack your bags and run away with me wouldn't hesitate I'd just go I would abandon it all drop every Everything, everyone for that scene I wanted all along When we walk off into the sunset Watching the end credits run Let everything, everyone fade away Like every final song I would abandon it all Anytime, anywhere, I couldn't go when you go. But as I stare at the screen on my phone, I won't see your face, just my own.
waiting for your ringtone, staring at my face. No, it won't ring, but I'm waiting just in case. I would abandon it all, drop everything at your call, everything, everyone for that scene. I wanted all along. When we walk off into the sunset, watching the end credits run, let everything, everyone fade away like every final song. I would abandon it all I would abandon it all Anytime, anywhere, fuck it and go when you go But as I stare at the screen on my phone, I won't see your face just my own. <laughs> beautiful. Just beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, I think the way you two are able to capture the energy and spirit of my generation and our generation is so inspiring and uh, moving. I. I yeah, and still accessible to my generation. And still accessible. <laughs> Donald always gets mad. She was always like, my generation too. And I'm like, yes, yeah. <laughs> I really, I'm glad to know that you have continued to work on this show. I know I've sort of been hounding you about it, but I just think that mm -hmm. it has, um, it really has an audience. And obviously you two have something to say. And I'm really glad to hear that you're still working on it. And thank you for sharing that song. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't yeah. exist if it wasn't for good speed, so. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Great. Michael, mm -hmm. anything else before we let these guys get on with their day or well, evening? I mean, I, I guess, I, I, you know, that song got me thinking so much. I already talked about generationally and yeah. all this stuff, but how do you feel like this moment is impacting our generation and subsequently what you're writing, I guess? How, does, how do those things conflate into your work? It's uh, a really it's a great good. question. Um, I think, I think. I mean, I think it's like it's changing all the time. I mean, at the beginning of lockdown and stuff, we kind of were writing standalone stuff and things that could be developed into other things that that were kind of about about the moment that we were in. Um, and I think that we wrote this song for this like musical theatre project that was happening online called "How Far We've Come," and it was like. Uh, it, it, I, I listen to it now and it's really funny because it's like it's, it's so in the mindset mm -hmm. of like April 2020 where like we were like oh like we were all like waiting to get through this moment and it was like it was like conceiving of the thing as like something that mm -hmm. as like a moment as opposed to like a long-term thing anyway um so that at the beginning it was definitely like we, we were we couldn't really concentrate on anything else or think about anything else or like imagine what the world was going to look like after it but I think it's starting to kind of I mean, it's like, it's just determining, we're, we're sort of writing kind of some stuff for like the idea of like, for like animated film basically, because that's like a, a world in which like, you know, which people don't have to be in the room together. So in terms of like mm -hmm. the form that we're going into, it's kind of, it's determining that. But I think, I don't know, Toge, do you think it's like, do you think it's like Im impacting, like what, what impacts are having on the actual, like the like content of what we're making? What we're I think, in terms of like our generation, I feel like it's like it's it, it's kind of like too soon to say what effect this is having because as you said, we're like we're like in the middle of it, and so it's very hard to like have a sense of like what I don't know. Maybe that's a cheap answer, but I think in terms of like me and Lucy and and what we're writing and the projects that we want to work on is that kind of similarly to Goodspeed because Goodspeed was like one of the only times over the last three years of doing six and having our like really like busy careers where we've like had a moment to like pause and like think and like and like th think actually like okay 
we 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 think we want to like say this thing, but what do we like actually want to like say and like write about? And that's how we that's how why my single came about because it was like just the moment I was like stopping to like have conversation to like let ideas like fester and like to mull over things and then be like oh wait this is the thing that we actually care about and what we want to write about and feels honest and authentic and true and I think what and the, and the thing that lockdown has had for us is in this moment of like pause where there's been like no distractions and a lot of like reflecting and um processing stuff and you know conversation as well we've been a bit like oh like what are things that are important to us like who are people that are important to us what are things that we like actually want to like do with our lives and it, like m- like more so than just like you know what musical theater plays do we want to write mm-hmm. musicals that's what they're called what musicals do we <laughs> like do we like want to write but also like what else do we want to do with like you know, as artists, are there like other fields we want to explore? Are there like other like voices we want to work with or other things we want to like discuss and say in our writing, whatever that may be. So it, and I think yeah. like that's had a definite effect because as opposed to just kind of like having a week here and there to be like, oh, let's like write this thing. We've been a bit more like, okay, what do we like actually want to work on and who we actually want to work with for the foreseeable future? And we haven't like right. fully answered that question, but we're like asking it in, in like a but more I like- think it- the way yeah. which we haven't I think really done for the last three years we try to ask a question similar to that of all the artists that we talk to during these online mm-hmm. engagements and i think that uh, we definitely hear that a great deal and i'm already sensing as i as i think i do from you and maybe i'm projecting you know, a, a nostalgia for what we're learning right now mm-hmm. um for the for this experience yeah. and that even you know god knows we want it to be over because we want to work again and we want to be in the room with with talented people and make great work together. But to be able to pause and think and really focus is a rare gift, especially for people who do what you do. And yeah. it's I think we're going to see an I just predict we're going to see an incredible outpouring of work over the next, you know, five to seven to 10 years. It's going to be incredible work because mm-hmm. people have had the time to focus and select the priorities select what the things that really matter to them the stories they really want to tell for sure and i think like goodspeed taught us that and this moment has kind of shown us that as well and like i think because goodspeed was like when you take yourself away from things that you associate with like being busy is like when you when you can when you can like have mental space to get stuff done and then kind of from goodspeed then we're like you know when we're going to write we're going to get an airbnb in the middle of nowhere and turn our phones off so no one can disturb us, you know? And, but I think from this moment, it's like, it's kind of shown us that like, you know, if life goes back to what it was and we're busy again, everything's running around, how important it's gonna be for us to like, take out like a month at some point and like not do anything and just to like, you know, process and think and reflect. And then like, that's where like, you know, hopefully inspiration will come from. But You're also always not. welcome to come back to good speed. We'll oh, leave it there. Oh, I think you're oh. always welcome. You just let us know. We will kick somebody else out of an apartment. Uh-huh. It'll be yours. Just okay, say the word. Cool. Moving to East Haven. Okay. Cool. okay. All right, back. guys, thank you so much. It's so great to catch up with you, to see you both well, to know you're working and being productive. And I, I know that everything being put on hold was heartbreaking, but the show Six is just too incredible. Uh, I can't wait to see the whole thing. Um, and we will, it will come back. I know that. And uh, the success you were having before will just continue and grow. So thank you for being with us and congratulations. Oh, well, so lovely, so lovely to see you. And thank you so much for having yes. us. And lovely to yeah. chat. Truly. Thank pleasure. Thank you for being here. And thank you for everyone who joined us tonight. Um, if you want to see Toby and Lucy's work when theater returns, uh, you can visit sixthemusical.com, spelled out just like that, um, and sign up for updates. <laughs> um, and if you love new work, <laughs> join us uh, here every other Thursday when we speak with writers and share a new musical and development. And I hope that you didn't miss the announcement last week, but with the tropical storm here in Connecticut, they, our guests may have, I mean, our, our audience may have missed the news that we're going back to work next week. Good Speed by the River, a series of concerts on the lawn yeah. um, by the Good Speed Opera House will begin next Thursday, August 20th. Oh, the day this airs, 
the day this airs, we will begin concerts for about at least three weeks. If things go well, we'll continue them a little longer than that. So check out the details at goodspeed.org and call the box office directly to secure your socially distanced seating on the lawn. Because it's going fast. <laughs> it is going fast. Really now that the power came back on, it's going very quickly. All right, everybody, we've confused everyone. This was a pre-record shot on August 11th. You're going to see it on August 20th. Thank you all for being with us. Toby and Lucy, stay safe. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. See you soon.